Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in the North 40. I'm Rick. Once again this week, I'm gonna be lone wolfing it without my wife, Brittany. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to clean your AR in five easy steps. This happens to be my personal uh, AR. This is a Daniel Defense AR-15 style rifle. This is my battle rifle. I've got a few different ARs. This particular rifle has a 16 and a half inch barrel. Um, and you see I've got a triangle grip here. Um, it's got backup sights front and rear. I had those popped up so you could see them. I've got a uh, peck style laser here uh, for both infrared and visible laser uh, to be used with night vision or visible. Bore sighted to my rifle. And this is an a EOTech red dot sight. This is also night vision capable. Um, what else? This has got a extending stock here, adjustable stock, and then of course my adjustable sling. This also has a Geisley SSA2 trigger in it and a chrome bolt carrier group that you'll see when we get into this. Um, I've had a ton of friends and family ask me, hey, can you show me how to best clean your AR? So I thought I'd do a video on it. We'll get into more detail in the video, um, but that's kind of what drove me to making this video. If you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and list them in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you the items that I highly recommend you have or you purchase to clean your AR to make it a lot easier for you. I have cleaned uh, this style weapon for oh, 30 years. So I've done it the hard way and now they've got some things that sure make it a lot easier for you to clean that you may not know about but uh, I want to show you so you can consider maybe grabbing those items to make it easier for you. Some of you may already be familiar with them so um, I highly recommend before you do any weapons cleaning you put on some rubber gloves. If you're allergic to rubber or latex I guess you can get the latex free. So I like to wear these. Sometimes they'll tear when I'm cleaning. I'll just replace, you know, switch them out. But um, just way easier to clean your hands, uh, stay clean from the carbon, the petroleum products, and so on. Obviously, a little safety note. Uh, I've already cleared my rifle. Before you do any weapons maintenance or cleaning, you always want to make sure your weapon is clear. I've got two rags here. Um, I've got a real dirty rag here for my bore and my chamber and stuff. Um, and then I've got uh, a wipe down rag here. So you always want some good rags when you're doing this. Because I do have optics, I do have a lens cleaning cloth so I can clean my uh, glass on my optic. Do that at the end. And then I've got some different cleaning solvents and lubricants here. Uh, what we have here is the old tried and true Hoppies uh, number nine. This is a gun solvent, not an oil. I've been using this since I was a kid. Most of my buddies in the military or retired military use this stuff. We had our own stuff I'll show you here in a minute in the military, but this really works in breaking up fouling and carbon and you know powder and stuff that just gets caked in your rifle from doing a lot of shooting. You shoot several hundred rounds, your your AR will get gummed up pretty good as far as, you know, carbon. So you're gonna use a solvent. So I highly recommend this solvent here. It's a good one. Hoppies also makes a lubricating oil here you can use as well. This is a high quality lubricating oil for your, your moving parts and where your friction points are on your weapon. I also use this uh, quite a bit, uh, REM oil. It's got a Teflon uh, additive to it, made by Remington. Pretty good lubricant here, and it's easy to just spray um, and just hit little spots, you know, with a little light coat of oil. Then we've got what we call CLP, and this is the civilian version of the military CLP, which stands for Cleaner Lubricant Protectant. This is kind of the all in one. So um, this is what the military uses, um, and I also use this as well. This is kind of an all in one oil cleaner lubricant, so good to have. In no certain order here, I've got a couple dental tools or scraper tools. Harbor Freight sells some cheap scraper tools. Those are good. They're not very sturdy, but they do work pretty good. So with these, I want to show you here. This one here, if you have something like this, these are the two I recommend. You'll see that's kind of like a spoon style um, 
scraper or almost looks like a little spatula. Let me see if I can get that to focus. There we go. You can see that it's got a fairly broad flat tip with a scraper edge. That's really good at getting in high carbon buildup areas like on your the fluted end of your uh, bolt uh, to really get that carbon off where it tends to build up pretty good. So that's good to have. And then this one here is just a two-sided pick uh, that you can get down into small places. So you got to point it in here nice find point this one's a little longer here I like one like that too you can get into your nooks and crannies and those are nice stainless steel and then you're always going to want a couple of weapons cleaning toothbrush uh, toothbrushes this one here is just a vinyl uh, plastic it won't scrape blued areas or seracoded areas and stuff you can scrub pretty good the solvent doesn't eat that away you got a small end here and, and a big end and then we've got here a copper wire toothbrush to really scrub carbon with. You see I've got some miles out of this guy here. You got the big side and the little side. Sometimes you need a good metal uh, brush to really scrub that carbon and get some of that fouling off. This is a carbon scraper um, for inside your bolt carrier group and um, on your bolt. Uh, when you when you take your bolt apart a piece of that that I can show you you can really get where there's a lot of carbon buildup you can really get that off with this tool here um, and this one is Otis uh, weapons cleaning company makes this they call it their 5.56 bone tool um, and this does have a national stock number for the military but this thing's great to get that heavy carbon off and back in the uh, military days we'd use cleaning rods years and years and then you know this is a, a short cleaning rod this i have a chamber brush on the end so this cleans the chamber and this is cleans the star portion of the chamber gets right in that area and i'll show you that so i keep it short like this because i can really get leverage in there and clean that star chamber and chamber really well that's where you get a lot of your your carbon and then i took another cleaning rod here and this is kind of a cool deal and i hadn't had uh, didn't know about these until a couple years ago. Here's one that hasn't been used. What these are is they're a little cotton pad and nice and thick. They're shaped the same shape as your star chamber in your AR. And boy, that's hard to clean. It, you normally go through like 15 Q-tips to get in every angle and slot and whatnot. This right here allows you to get in that star chamber, spin it around, in and out, in and out, and it really cleans well. You see, I have one here. Um, it, I got a whole pack of these. And you just screw it through the little hole. It comes with a little washer here, and you'll just screw it down. And that'll allow you to get into that star chamber really good. Just kind of work it around. Instead of using the old cleaning rod, with the um, bore brush on the end and then a chamber brush now they have bore snakes that are just awesome I highly recommend you get a 556 five, bore snake you can get this for the caliber uh, of gun so obviously this is 556 five, um, and it's got built-in uh, brushes copper brushes in the center and then the rest of this acts as your buffer to clean it so this will you make a couple passes with this, you dip this in, in solvent, some of that hoppy solvent, run it through a couple times and it'll literally clean all the carbon out, swab it out. And you can add a little oil and run it through again if you want. Um, but yeah, this thing will clean your barrel very easily. You just drop the weighted end in and I'll show you that and run it through a couple times. And then finally, if your weapon is, you know, you've been out shooting, hunting, training, whatever, you get dust all over your weapon. This right here will get that dust out of your your optics and your cracks and crevices so a nice brush like this is is invaluable all right so those are kind of all the things I highly recommend you have to make this a lot easier let's get into this so the first thing you have to do here we're on the one side the right side of the weapon here you'll see I have a front takedown pin and a rear takedown pin your bolt needs to be forward what we're gonna do is we're going to flip this over and sometimes I have a hard time if these are a little snug see I have some weapons of mine are a little snug on these takedown pins and some aren't so what I'll do is I'll just take a uh, cleaning rod and I can just tap that and get that started and see it just pops down in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the field stripping version here of the five easy steps to show you that and then I'll talk to you about the other detailed ways you may want to break this down and clean it even further so Step one is going to be popping that rear takedown pin 
I'm going to flip that back over. Now you see it's popped through the other side. That allows us to what we call shotgun the rifle. So now I can just pivot that down and I can pull my bolt carrier group out. Here's my bolt carrier group and my charging handle. So I can remove both of those. So in the military, in a tactical environment, this is what we do when uh, someone's pulling security and you're, you back off a perimeter or whatever to clean your weapon. You don't wanna fully break it down and disassemble it. In case you make contact, you could reassemble it quicker. So this is what we call a shotgun. So step one is getting that rear takedown pin and shotgun your rifle. Step two is removing the bolt carrier group which mine is a chrome bolt carrier group and your charging handle okay so that second step if your weapon isn't super dirty um, you haven't fired a ton of rounds what you can do is you could do a field cleaning here without taking the bolt out of here so here's your bolt carrier group and here's your actual bolt you see it goes in and out and it's retained and inside here here's your firing pin uh, let's see here, the back side of your firing pin, you can see inside there, okay, right there. So I'm gonna show you how to take those out, but for the field stripping, step two, you can fully wipe this down. You could scrub your bolt face here, and you can clean all the uh, teeth around your, your uh, bolt, and you can really get in here and wipe this down. You can squirt a little oil down in here where that pivots and slides on your friction points and then the other friction points of your bolt carrier. We did one, opening it up or shotgunning it. Two, removing the bolt carrier group and the charging handle here and wiping them down and lubricating. I'm gonna show you a little more details here if you wanna know how to disassemble and fully break this down to clean it even further. Okay, so you know I like to grab, a lot of times I'll just grab that dental tool here and I'll just grab that firing pin retaining pin. Okay, the firing pin re re retaining pin. You'll see that there. You don't wanna lose that, so make sure you keep that secure. I'll set that to the side. What that does is it'll, it's gonna allow us to remove our, our firing pin now. So it slid right down in here. I'll make sure my bolt's forward and then just tap. Here is my firing pin. My weapon is pretty clean right now. I don't like keeping all my, my weapons dirty. I always clean them. So um, this right here is the firing pin. To remove the bolt, we're gonna remove this cam here and you'll see it's square, but without the firing pin in there, it will rotate. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna rotate it parallel the long axis of it's kind of a little rectangle, not a complete square. You want the, the long axis the same direction as your bolt carrier group here. All right, let's see if you can see that. So you'll see I, it was rotated this way, okay? See how it is? It's kind of cantywampus there. Now, we're gonna rotate it so it's like that, in line with the bolt carrier group. And then I'll just rotate it over and pop it in my hand and that comes right out, okay? So we'll set that aside. Now, your bolt will slide right out, okay? So now, you this right here can get a lot of carbon in it, inside here, and back around inside that, that, in, that hole there. So that tool I showed you earlier, that can be used for, you flip this over, you can actually get down in here where that carbon goes, it builds up in the bottom of that hole. There's a ridge or a, it bottoms out for the bolt. You can actually stick this down in here and rotate it. So the bolt carrier, that's one of your primary areas of focus is inside, down in here, inside this portion that gets a lot of carbon. You wanna get down inside there with Q-tips, a rag you can jam in there and really clean it out. Flip it around this way and get in that hole back in here the same way. And then you can normally just wipe the rest of it down. You don't normally have to scrub it or scrape it. The rest of it will wipe down. Now, with this chrome bolt carrier group, it really wipes off well. The carbon does not adhere to it as well, hence the reason I have this. The blued versions, will it, it, they're harder to clean. So this is normally an upgrade um, on weapons. It's a, to, to get the chrome bolt carrier group and bolt it. It'll, it'll cost you a little more, but I, I think it's worth it. All right, so now, say you have to 
clean this even further, your bolt, okay? Right here, there's a pin. This right here is keeping our extractor. That, that piece here that you see can be removed. That is called the extractor. Now that moves and flexes a little bit and grabs the rim of the round and holds it in, okay? And then you see the firing pin hole there where your firing pin will come through and hit your round and your primer. So all you have to do with that is you'll push this pin through here and I like to use a dental tool um, or something like this, you know, to get it out. A lot of times, or you know, a lot of times you can use your firing pin as well. So you get your firing pin in there, put a little pressure on this and that pin will normally come right out. Okay, so get it started and I should be able to push it through now. There it is, okay. Some are stiffer than others to get out. So we're going to get that in, okay, all right, so here's that little pin here, and now that I have it out, you're going to see that extractor come right off, move my hand out of the way here, so here is what it looks like inside there, okay, and here's your extractor you'll see the slot or the hole where that pin went through. And then on this end, there is a spring right here. And this Daniel Defense, they put a donut on here um, as well. And then here is your slot where it grabs the rim of the round, right? And it moves back and forth and it extracts the round. So why would you want to take that off? Well, let me show you. So. Here is the inside of your bolt. Now it's gonna allow you to get inside there and clean inside that opening. And you can also run a pipe cleaner through the firing pinhole all the way through where the get this, this end here comes through as well from the gas. You can actually clean all that inside. This tends to get a lot of carbon. This piece here is one of the worst areas for carbon. I use my firing pin to point here. This area, this fluted area here, is where the gas comes through and it, and it sticks right into this area in that beveled edge or that rounded edge. So that scraper tool I showed you earlier also has that in there. You can drop this right in here and spin it around and it's got some edges there that will scrape. It's designed to fit right into that curved area and get that carbon off. I remember spending forever uh, as a young private or young soldier, or whatever, cleaning this area with the, 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 the copper brush just to get that carbon off, took forever. And if it's really bad, like I said, you're gonna wanna use that dental tool, the flat end, and just get on here and just scrape that carbon off. I wanted to include that in the video, FYI, because there's a lot of folks to include some of my family members, they've asked me. They didn't know how to take this bolt apart and stuff, so it's good to know. Um, I didn't tell you the charging handle though. I guess I'll hit that. That's always good, it gets carbon in here, so you can get a Q-tip and a rag, clean out some solvent, then re-oil it, uh, light coat of oil. And then you can put a little drop of oil here on your friction point where the spring is with the detent. If it's shotgun like this, okay, and we're in a tactical environment or you wanted to be quick, what we can do, you can see that star chamber down in there, right at the start of the barrel, also known as the bore there, um, and then it goes into the chamber and then the bore. So this star chamber in there gets super gummed up with carbon from you know a lot of exhaustive shooting. Where this comes in handy, this is that chamber brush. You're just gonna have that on a rod because you wanna be able to jam that in there and get it into that chamber and just rotate it, rotate it, rotate it. Work it in and out, in and out, in and out. And that will really clean that star chamber for you. And then, you, if you don't have this sexy deal here I showed you to get into that star chamber, once you break up all the carbon and, uh, you know, debris, you've used oil and stuff, but you're gonna use this item here to get into that star chamber and clean it. All right, you'll just slide that down here. You want that on a static fixed rod too, because you wanna go in and out, in and out, and spin that and really clean that star chamber out, okay? Now, once you've done that, that star chamber, 
is priority first, okay? So step, this is step three. Step one was take down pins, shotgunning. Step two, remove your bolt and bolt carrier group and charging handle. Clean your bolt carrier group and charging handle by just wiping them down, lubricating them, okay? Then step three, you're gonna clean your chamber all right, your chamber, star chamber. Then we're gonna use, to do the barrel, we're gonna use our boar snake, okay? So you see that boar snake here? You've got brush area here. There's copper, copper brush here. So what we're gonna do is just drop that in from the back. Do it from the, the back, the direction the bullet exits the um, rifle. That's the way you always wanna. At least I was taught to uh, run your bore and clean your clean your barrel. So you got to kind of do this in an angle for the camera. But there is a weighted tip on the end of the bore snake. Just take that free running end with that weight on it and just drop it in. Okay, I've got it in now, and all it is is just uh, it's like 550 cord. They put a weight on it. Okay, so I've got it dropped in there, and then you see I've got it coming through my end of my muzzle here. It's dropped through. So once the, I'm at that point, I'm just gonna secure it. Okay, I've already dipped this in solvent. If I've got a lot of carbon in this barrel, I dip that center where the brush is in that solvent. I'm just gonna pull that right through that barrel. Okay, you're gonna see it come out in a second. And what this does is the brush cleans that and then the length of the cotton webbing swabs your barrel and cleans your barrel. Okay, boom. I'll do that two, three times, barrel's clean, okay? A lot of, another point to focus on here in step number three included is your muzzle brake or your muzzle. This will get a lot of carbon buildup on it as well. You wanna hit that with your copper brush to get that carbon off with some solvent. Wipe it down, run some Q-tips through these holes or whatever. You may have a different design and then just wipe it off. And then a light coat of oil, okay? So that that is all of step three. And actually, step four, and this is only as needed, okay? Step four is gonna be just, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on fire and release my trigger, okay? Inside my trigger mechanism here, you've got some cracks and crevices. A lot of times you'll get particles of the round, some copper shavings, you might get um, dust, and a little carbon blowback in there. All you gotta do in there, sometimes just blow it out and then run a Q-tip through that area there and swab it out and that will take care of that, okay? And along with that, in that same location of step four, you're gonna go ahead and depress that hammer and then here in the back of the weapon, right here, is my buffer spring. Okay, there's a little tit right here, you just depress that and your buffer spring will slide right out, okay? And what you do is just work it out. Along with that step four of cleaning out the trigger mechanism, blowing it out, you can pull this out, wipe it down with a rag, your buffer and buffer spring. Sometimes I'll spray it with oil as well, okay? You can just hit that. You don't have to, that thing's pretty resilient. It can go a long time without cleaning it. If you're in wet weather conditions too, you might wanna hit that more often, so. Okay, and then finally, Step five is going to be just wiping down the exterior of your rifle, all right? Just getting it cleaned up, and if there's any areas that are prone to rust, you can give it a little dab of oil. There's a little spring here. You've got your magazine release button here. You can get into that. It's got a spring inside. Uh, but you don't want the outside or exterior of your weapon super oily. It'll attract dust and dirt, okay? So that's pretty much it. There's a, you can hit your, uh, this side here of your bolt catch. It's spring loaded, you can give it a little oil too. And that's primarily it. Um, you can hit a little oil on your stock area where it extends, a little lube on the locking positions on that, but that's about it. You don't wanna have oil, like I said, heavy oil on the exterior or on any of these composite. If you have composite like I do on the pistol grip or on your stock, you don't wanna have a bunch of oil on that. It will degrade it and you don't want it to be slippery. There's that brush, like I said, if there's a lot of dust, you've been training hard or whatever, in our case, fighting in the military, these things get dusty. I can get down in here and get all that dust out of there, clean it off um, before I, you know, 
wipe it down if I need to oil it I'll do that first and then oil it so let me show you if you did want to take this lower receiver here instead of shotgunning all you got to do is depress this front takedown pin once again mine are pretty snug I'm going to uh, have to tap that out okay once I get it once you get it started it'll pull right out so now I have my lower receiver here so that's a little easier for you to see now what that looks like so you got your lower receiver and I'll you know when I'm cleaning at home or whatever now and I'm not in a foxhole doing this or in a war zone or something I always shotgun clean but I'll do a full breakdown like this just easy to work with here's my upper receiver complete right that's really it so it's pretty simple I know I went a little more in depth to show you the other things if you want to do a full breakdown cleaning well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, listen below, and we will get back to you. Thanks for supporting our channel. If you like our content, please subscribe. It'll really help us out. We'll see you next time.